I grew up in a very warm and loving environment, but from what I was told, I was lucky. My sister and I had two drug addict parents who never took care of us. When my mom was pregnant with me, she smoked and got drunk pretty often, and when I was born, my sister was the only one who took care of me. When I was two months old, they left us both in a mall and left, and we never saw them again. An old couple found us and contacted the police and eventually decided to adopt us. Today I'm 19 and my sister is 34. We're really close, but I still live with my adopted family and she lives about 20 minutes away. So a couple of months ago, a friend and I took a DNA test and that's how I found out I have an aunt in the system. I immediately reached out to her and we agreed to meet in person, all without telling my sister a thing. We tried to figure things out, so I asked her if she has a brother or sister, and she told me that when she was 13, her older sister got pregnant while being drunk with her junkie boyfriend, and a month after giving birth, she ran away with the baby after some pretty intensive fights with their parents. They never found her, but stopped looking after a year and a half. When I saw the picture, I knew it was my sister 100%. My sister is my mom. We were never abandoned. She fabricated this entire thing to my adoptive family. Tell me men kind of scare you without telling me men kind of scare you. So let me tell you about the time I reverse repeat this guy. A couple of years ago, a guy I went to college with asked me out on a date. We were supposed to be going to get drinks and he was like, come to my house so we can just leave from this location and take one car. I didn't think anything of it. But when I get there, he says he's not done getting ready and that we should just come in for a second and chill and then we can depart. I get inside. He asked me if I want a glass of wine. And I'm like, of course I want a glass of wine because I love wine. So he pours a glass of wine and he puts a wine charm on my glass, which I thought was kind of weird because it was just the two of us. So why do we need to identify which drink is which? I leave something in the car and like a dumbass, leave my drink unattended for about a minute and a half and come back. And when I get back, there's this weird powdery substance floating on the top of my drink. At this point, all of the fire alarms in my head are like ring a ling a ling -ing, And I had to think of a master plan quick. You guys will never guess what happened next. Story time about the two-year-old boy who lost his life at the Pittsburgh Zoo. On a Sunday morning, a mother decided that she was going to take her son to the zoo. Everything was going good until they had gotten to the wild African dog exhibit. I'm going to insert a picture of what it looks like right here. On both sides of the exhibit, there was plexiglass. But looking straight out into the exhibit, there was no glass. They also had a roughly four and a half foot railing there. Well, as most parents do whenever they take their children to the zoo, they pick them up so that way they can get a better look at the animals. Well, this mom had an idea of standing her child up onto the railing. To get a better look at the dogs. Now, me personally, I have been to that zoo before. There are many signs saying not to lean over or set your child onto the railing. Well, in an instant, her child had lunged forward. And she had accidentally let go of him. At 11.45, her child had dropped 10 feet down into the dog enclosure. A few seconds later, the people around her had went to get employees. But by that time, the dogs had already gotten to the two-year-old boy. Like for part two. This is part two of how I almost drowned someone's baby. But when this was happening, I was on my phone, so I was distracted. I looked down in the pool, and I see that the baby is drowning. I don't really know how to explain the way that my heart skipped a beat at this exact moment. Like my heart was beating regularly and then all of a sudden it skipped two beats at a time. My ass was in my forehead. Immediately dived down into the pool. Took out the baby, but the baby was suffocating. Now listen, I never did CPR, but God blessed me with those skills in that very moment. I was able to keep myself calm and did CPR on the baby and was able to get it to breathe again. I did not tell nobody shit about this. I didn't tell the parents. The baby is fine. I really should have told the parents because what if it did cause a health issue but from what i've seen the baby's fine yeah i didn't tell them what happened but i quit babysitting because i felt guilty they haven't said anything about their baby dysfunctioning so the baby is fine just because of this i pulled myself out of babysitting and i'll never babysit ever again because i'm clearly not responsible enough this is gonna be a story time of how i almost drowned someone's baby y'all i cannot sleep at night because of this i cannot believe that i did this to someone's child but let me go ahead and explain myself so i was babysitting for this one rich ass family what's so amazing about it was the fact that the parents were never home at the same time i was just a senior in high school i didn't have much to do after school either i didn't have hobbies i didn't play a sport so i had all the time in the world to babysit for their kid and house sit for them this baby was only one years old since the baby was so young i had to keep eyes on it at all times they had this big pool area and they said that if i ever wanted to go swimming i could and there was a floaty for the baby one day while i was house sitting and babysitting for them i went in the pool and i put the baby on the floaty thing somehow i forgot that that baby existed i felt something in the bottom of my feet at the pool it was like slippery so i kicked it out the way because i thought it was a toy and then when i turn around me i see that the baby is not on the floaty i look down and i see this tiny human sunk in the water like for part two
story time thank you tiffany for sending me the story so tiffany and her sister were at the beach facing away from the water and it was getting dark the tide was coming in and they heard these crying noises that kind of sounded like they were coming from the ocean so they called the police you know to make sure everything's okay so the police show up they check everywhere and they don't find anything so they send out boats to go out even further just in case somebody's all the way out there so they started late at night but this was a party night so this went all the way till 6 a.m and everybody had pretty much left tiffany and her sister had stayed a little bit longer and right then comes a woman running out of the alleyway from the nightclub area visibly upset completely drenched in water as if she had gone swimming and so tiffany kind of finds this weird so she calls the police again and right as that happens the girl runs onto the pier and jumps off tiffany and her sister are freaking out the police boats and everything show up and they send them home a few days later the police contact tiffany and ask to meet up so they can like ask questions about that night so the police told tiffany that the crying came from the woman that was jumping off the pier she had done this multiple times that night swimming far out so that the current and the rough waters could drag her under and kill her story is not over by any means yet part two is coming right now Part two of the lady jumping off of the pier. So she was jumping off, trying to swim out really far so that the rough waters in the current could drag her under and kill her. She just didn't want to live anymore. The police told Tiffany that then, two hours later, she was found on a different pier trying to do the same thing. Thankfully, the police got to her in time and took her away to a hospital where she can get the help that she needs. Tiffany witnessed this and everything, and this all happened five years ago. And so recently, right before COVID, Tiffany gets on a bus and she sits down. And she looks up, and sitting right across from her is the same lady. And she's there with two little kids, and she recognizes is Tiffany and she tells her more about that night and how she was going through a really bad relationship she was having a really hard time and she just wanted to end it all but there she sat now married with two beautiful little girls and she tells Tiffany that if it wasn't for her calling the police that she would have died not knowing her future I love the story I'm so glad that Tiffany sent it to me not to be cheesy but I think that this is a very strong message for people who are going through a really rough time I promise you it will get better there is a future waiting for you and if this isn't proof then I don't know what is